Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to our talk with Karen and Louise. We just wanted to, in preparation for our Transformational Channeling Day on uh, 1 October in Amsterdam, we wanted just to give everyone an introduction to who we are and a little bit about channeling and what we do. So I just want to say welcome, and hi, Louise, how are you? <laughs> hi, Karen, I'm great, thanks. Good. Why don't you start, because, um, yeah, since I'm hosting a little bit, why don't you start and just give your background as to um, how you got started channeling and you know what was what led up to that moment, and and then then you can also maybe say what you and you and Icon really talk about in your channeling. Okay. Okay. Um, I feel like there was a kind of a process that led up to the day when the channeling spontaneously happened. So mm -hmm. I guess I rewind about maybe fifteen years, mm -hmm. um, and it started with. Uh, me having what we refer to as ESP experiences, so that's extrasensory perception experiences. And I think the first thing that happened to me was I was having a nap one afternoon yeah. on the sofa and I experienced sleep paralysis. Yeah. And sleep, I had no idea what was happening. I thought I was dying. Um, sleep paralysis is a phenomena where the body stays asleep and the and you wake up. So I was awake, mm -hmm. but I couldn't move my body and I couldn't open my eyes. It was like my body was a dead body. So I thought I died and it was a pretty scary experience actually. And that happened to me a few more times. Um, so I wanted to know what was going on. So I started researching on the internet and I found out that that was sleep paralysis. And, and then I started having out of body experiences spontaneously. So I'd just be asleep in my bed at night, and the next thing I knew, I'd be flying around the room. Was it always in your own room, or did you go other places, or? Um, this stuff, yeah, it happened in other places too. Yeah. yeah. Um, not just in my room. Yeah. Um, and then I started to see energy, um, like see energy around people and colors around people. Oh, wow. And... I started to realize that, wow, there's more to reality than I thought there was before. Yeah. Um, the the sleep paralysis and the out of body experience was kind of my first intuitive knowing that there was more to me than this physical body. Yeah. I existed uh, somehow. Um, I don't know how to put it in words. Just yeah, there. I guess there is more to me than the physical body. That's not what I was. I had some kind of essence. That was, was that was that was that opposed to your uh, current line of thinking? Did you have a, a time period where you, where you were like, whoa, what is happening? And and was there resistance to that idea, or did you just instantly accept it and and know that that this was? Do you know what I mean? Was it like diametrically opposed to your worldview or? Did you just kind of go with the flow and said, okay, and accept it? Well, I didn't really think about these things yeah. before I had these experiences. Okay. So it was so, totally new for you. Yeah, it kind yeah. of just um, woke me up and made me think about, like, what am I exactly? What What is this reality? Like, yeah. what what is this energy that I'm suddenly seeing? Yeah. And the experiences were getting more and more extreme. So... <laughs> I would start to look at people and then their face would kind of morph into their past life, who they were as a past life and information would come to me um, about who they were and, and, and uh, how what they experienced in that life was affecting them in this life. Oh, oh that's good. And, um, and then I started seeing actual beings in my bedroom at night. Um, <laughs> And then it got really scary for me. Did the uh, beings interact with you, or they just sort of were standing there staring at you? or? Yeah, they interacted with me, and they would oh. take me onto their ships. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it was a very scary time for me, and it actually reached a point where it was getting destructive for my life because 
I was so scared of it happening that I would force myself to stay awake the whole night <laughs> so that they wouldn't be able to come get me. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I was experiencing sleep deprivation. I was, I was not functioning well. And I was working as a teacher at that time. So I was going to class and I was like half asleep and it was really challenging for me to function. Um, and I think the, a big turning point after that was when I moved to Amsterdam and I got a teaching job mm -hmm. um, in Amsterdam and a woman from India came. I heard about this woman and I didn't know much about her really, but uh, people were talking about her. Yeah. Uh, and she's regarded as probably one of the most deeply recognized beings on the planet right now. Yeah. Being deeply recognized as, a, as an enlightened being. People see her in that way. And, and they call her the hugging saint. Right. Um, because she hugs everyone. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So um, I decided to go along and see what it was all about. And uh, I didn't really know much about it, but I had to wait maybe 12 hours mm. and just to see her, you get a ticket. There were hundreds of people there. Yeah. And I think it was like one or two in the morning when finally my turn came and I'd been standing in this long line and there was loud Indian music playing, a live band, and a big crowd of people around there. And um, I, w I was pushed forward, and I got my hug, and she shoved a piece of chocolate in my <laughs> mouth, and someone whisked me away, and it was uh, it was like uh, disorienting. It was very intense energy field, very noisy, lots of people. And I really felt like, whoa, I need to lie down. Yeah. So I went in the back room and I found a quiet space and I lay down there and, uh, and I closed my eyes and I started to see this color purple here, like something opening here. And then I heard this voice say to me, go to India. What you seek, you shall find there. What accent did they have? Was it a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember having a particular accent. It just... Uh, I'm just joking with you. It was kind of neutral. Like, I didn't, like, <laughs> Did you hear it outside your uh, head or inside? Um, I don't remember now. Yeah. It was just very clear to me that it was yeah. not me saying that. Like, yeah. I didn't know where this voice had come from. Yeah. And I was kind of shocked by it. But it had a, a, a deep impact on me. And so much so that I decided to quit my job and I... Was it, did you quit like straight away the next day or was it like within a uh, few months or...? No, it was probably a few weeks. Oh wow. You know, I, I thought about it and I was like, wow, am I really going to do this? Am I really going to go to India? You know, I, I've got this, this nice job, I have a good income. I was teaching at the university here. Mm. And my career was doing pretty well at this point and... I have this apartment, what am I going to do? I need to find someone for the apartment. So all these thoughts were going around in my head, but it just it kept pulling me in my heart, and I couldn't ignore it. It was getting stronger and stronger. And uh, I was actually going backwards and forwards for a while between the idea of going or not, because it just seemed so crazy when I tried to rationalize it yeah. with my mind. And then I started to doubt, M maybe I didn't actually hear a voice, you know, it sounds a little bit crazy. Maybe I imagined the whole thing. <laughs> but it, this pull started getting stronger and stronger, and um, I, I couldn't ignore it anymore. So all my stuff went into storage. I left the apartment, I left the job, and I just got a one-way ticket to India. And I went to a place called Rishikesh, mm. uh, at the foothills of the Himalaya on the River Ganges. And it's a, it's a place that's renowned for yoga and meditation. There's a lot of um, yogis go there and they meditate in caves. And yeah. I spent about three months with two teachers. Um, and it was a very powerful experience for me. I experienced a lot of uh, openings inside myself. Yeah. Uh, I experienced a lot of inner transformation. And I met a lot of the shadow aspect 
parts and I saw parts of myself I hadn't seen before. Wow. Um, there was one day in particular that really changed my life, which was an experience I had when I was sat in a room of maybe a thousand people with this teacher and the energy was very strong and um, he was doing a kind of um, almost like a meditation, like guiding everybody um, to reflect within and um, a kind of self-inquiry to discover the true nature of the self. And I was following his guidance and all of a sudden, um, I don't really have words to describe it, but it felt like my mind just exploded, like pfft, like my mind was gone and there was nothing and everything all at the same time. Yeah. And I came out and I couldn't even speak. I was just like, <laughs> everything changed. Oh, my reality awesome. was different. Yeah. Everything that I'd been listening to, everything I've been hearing about spirituality and everything I've been reading about, suddenly it all made sense. Wow. I knew what they were talking about now. That was like the, when you fall in love, all the love songs make sense kind of thing. This was all the all the spiritual teachings made sense all at once. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and that really changed everything. It was very clear to me from that moment. Um, I wasn't going back to teaching. Wow. I found something much more valuable, much more 